This is a training video for A3 environmental consultants, new employees, and associates on the basics of performing a phase one environmental site assessment site visit. The site visit is only one component of the phase one ESA. In this video, we will focus on the basics of an outside portion of a site visit. If you haven't seen the first video in the series, getting ready to do a phase one ESA site visit, please start there before reviewing this video. Before we begin, we should talk about basic safety. Be aware of the dangers and risks at the property. Sometimes the site contact and the type of property you're assessing will require personal protective equipment, such as hard hat, safety vest, eye protection, or ear protection. Typically, the site contact will provide that to you, but you may need to provide it yourself. You should never be in a restricted area without first checking in with the site contact. Consider all active construction sites restrictive. Be aware of dangerous neighborhoods and their risks. If you feel that a property is unsafe, for whatever reason, please contact your project manager as soon as possible. Your safety is our number one concern. Be aware of dangerous trip and fall hazards. Often we work alone and often out of cell range. Make sure you're not in a position to need medical attention because of carelessness. Try not to trespass if it looks like you should not be on someone else's property. Never go over, under, or around fences or gates on other people's property. And finally, exercise good judgment. Let's begin the outside portion of a phase one ESA site visit. We all know that between traffic and our other appointments throughout the day, it's difficult to be exactly on time for an appointment. And yet being on time is the most important thing we can do from a customer service perspective. Being late or early can be upsetting to our clients, some which have to come great distances to meet you at the site. The best customer service we can give is to pull over our vehicles to a safe location and call the site contact. If you are going to be moderately early and if the site does not have restricted access, it's good to perform the outside part of the site visit before going in to meet the client. If you find yourself very early for an appointment, it is also good to call before going inside. I should probably note we perform these site investigations on vacant property too so there may not be an inside. It's also not unusual for vacant properties to not have a site contact that will meet you. When you arrive, refer to your property boundary map and orient yourself so you know which way is north, south, east, and west. If you have a smartphone, you have a compass on the smartphone. Take another look at the property boundaries. Remember, this is a site inspection, not just a building inspection. We have to walk the parcel border of the site. Sometimes the inspection covers several parcels that are adjacent, so looking at that map is very important. In a nutshell, we need pictures of all sides of the building, which we call elevations. We also need all the adjacent properties, regardless of what they are. When observing the adjoining properties, make sure you note their address and use. If trees are in the way, make sure you find a clearing so you can see what's beyond the trees. If there's a better vantage point, always take the extra time to find the better vantage point. When looking at water features, be sure to look for evidence of disposal, sheens, or other issues that might be a concern on the property. This is an example of a stormwater sewer grate. When observing the outside of the property, take pictures of anything outside the property that is of concern. This is a sewer cleanout that is associated with the on-site grease trap. Something to note, when walking through parking lots is if there are areas of patched asphalt. This could be an indication of either just repairs to the asphalt or a possible removal of an underground storage tank. When observing pad mounted transformers, always walk around the transformer if possible and look for evidence of it leaking. Also make note if there are any stickers on the transformer that would indicate that the transformer is PCB free. When observing exterior features of a property, always take pictures of things even if you know what they are. When taking pictures of the elevation of a building, make sure you walk far enough away from the building so you can get the entire elevation in your picture. 
Always make it a point to ask your key site contact person if you can get into areas that are locked. If they don't have a key to get into that area, do your best to see what is inside. When walking around a property, it's easy to forget that you have to get close to the building and observe the building up close. Make sure after you take your elevation pictures that you walk close to the building along its edge for any signs of concern. Now it's time to go inside.